There have been a number of new features and improvements made to framing and building construction in Chief Architect X16. Let's begin with framing. The Build Framing dialog has been simplified by moving the framing defaults to a separate view. To change any of the framing defaults, open that view and you will find all the familiar defaults by category. In the Streamlined Framing dialog are two framing options. The automatic rebuild will continuously update the framing and build once framing can be manually run. For each of these sections, you can choose to build by a specific category or for all the categories. For Build Once Framing, you can select which floors to build for both the floor and ceiling category. Ceiling Framing is now its own category that is now separated from Roof Framing. It can be created for automatic ceilings and for custom ceilings like vaults and trays. And in the Delete Objects tool, you will find a new option to delete framing for custom ceilings. Framing for openings now has an option for flat headers, like for interior doors when a full header may not be required for non-bearing walls. You will find this framing method on the framing panel for both doors and windows. Flat headers will be rotated to match the depth of the wall framing. The flat header board is different than the top sill since it's built above the opening trimmer. Flat headers can be built at the top of the wall or at the top of the opening and can be combined for openings that are close. In the wall specification dialog on the structure panel is an option to switch which side the wall details view the framing, either the interior or exterior side. In a wall detail view, you can quickly rebuild the wall's framing by selecting any framing member and using the Rebuild Framing tool in the lower edit menu. Notice when the framing is rebuilt, the label updates to be viewed from the inside. For roof truss framing, a direction line is available to control the automatic orientation direction for trusses. As I rotate the direction line, the trusses also rotate for precise control for truss framing. Also available is a roof girder truss line. It will split the roof system into unique parts, allowing the framing to have two directions. This line can be defined for the number of girder trusses along with other truss information. There is added control for deck posts and beams. For beams, you can specify the count. They can be positioned to be in line with the joists or placed under the joists. A new offset allows you to precisely position the beam, including making it flush with the deck's edge. For the deck support posts, they can be aligned with the beam's center, exterior, or interior edge. When the deck is automatically framed, it now includes the blocking for border planks. For deck and interior railing walls, newel placing can be defined from start, end, centered, between ends, manually, or automatically spaced. Newels can be repositioned within the railing using a new move tool found in the edit toolbar or by clicking on the newel and pressing the tab key. Additional newels can also be added. To dimension newels, there is a setting for both centers and sides. These dimensions can locate and be used to precisely position the newel posts. If you have customized stairs and ramps and want to reuse them on future projects, you can add them to the library. From the library, click and drag to create a new variation of that stair style. Corner shelves have been enabled in X16. Similar to placing a corner cabinet, hover with the shelf tool in a corner to create a corner wrapping shelf that can easily be changed from an angled front to an L shape. For cabinet doors and drawers, you can define the panel's thickness. 
you will find the setting on the Door Drawer section in the Cabinet dialog. Space planning has been updated to improve bubble diagramming for design layout. Room boxes have polyline editing, allowing you to add breaks and change the room's shape. These boxes include walls on the outside, and when bumped together, change the dividing wall to a 4-inch wall. Room box snapping was updated so that the boxes snap more easily. When room boxes overlap, it will cut out the other box. And finally, room boxes now show when using reference floor display. As in this example, you can see the room boxes from the floor above. Electrical connections can now be placed on non-electrical objects, such as this text box. There are electrical connection defaults to set up the spline's segment angle and curvature arc for electrical circuits. On the Line Style panel, you can define the line options in Drawing Group, and then there's an added Label panel. Label panels have also been added to several other object dialogs. The Layer Painter tool has all the management tools for Add, Copy, Delete, and Set as a default layer directly within this dialog. Previously, these had to be accessed externally to the tool. There are many great new features in Chief Architect X16, and you can expect to see it in late Q2 of 2024. And remember, all new software subscriptions include support and software assurance that provides access to all of our latest software. So, if you are not currently a customer, get started today with Chief Architect.